Good afternoon, everyone. Australian Met Office coming out saying it's the warmest May ever, yet their own data shows that it's not. It's 10.3, which is below the May 94 to 2014 average. La Nina forecast repeating something like 1976, 1917. Reasons are the Pacific Ocean cooling the most ever recorded. You can see the water temperature is already changing. We're looking for sunspots, Atlantic and Pacific Ocean temperatures decreasing as a repeat cycle. Take a look at the deep La Nina coming. We know where the solar minimums occurred before. You can see the drops in temperature clearly in the records from all the continents. You look for the planetary matchups, 79 AD, 1356, 1486. 1665, 1855, 2024. Past temperatures in Antarctica match exactly with these drops. So you're going to have to ask yourself, where does this put Australian wheat production? Let's start right off here with a little bit of climate trickery from the Met Office themselves, claiming that it was the warmest May ever recorded. But when we jump and actually look into their data set, May 2016, 10.3, but the average May from 94 to 2014, 10.6. It's cooler, yet they claim it's warmer. La Nina outlook for Australia. Pacific Ocean water temperatures dropping off the fastest ever recorded. You can see La Nina already starting. Water temperatures around Western Australia, a little bit south there, cooler than normal. And matching El Nino, La Nina strength patterns since this El Nino was the second strongest ever recorded, we can expect a severe and steep drop off in one of those correlating areas. But we're also looking at the same time for cooling Atlantic ocean water temperatures, solar cycles on the decline, as well as the beginning of La Nina. Jumping back through the records here again from the Met Office, we're looking for a long extended El Nino, which puts us right in around the 1916-1917 era compared to with something like 1998 that you'll see not the strength coming off. In the ENSO outlook values, if you see 1998, it rolls out for about a year and a half. I'm curious with the solar cycle decline, how much further this is going to be extended because of grand solar minimum effects. This was the 98 to 2001. It doesn't really match because Tasmania was receiving record floods. It doesn't really look like a 1998 repeat due to the fact that Tasmania doesn't have much rainfall during that time, but this last 100-year storm blowing through. So we need to take a look at the values and more focus on 1917 and 1975. These last 100-year storms blew through, even left snow all over the place in Tasmania, as well as the 100-year floods. But when we do look at 1975, 74, 73, you can see Tasmania does start to get wetter. That'll match up with what's going on right now. Also 1917, another wet period down there. So that does match coming out of their drought. One thing to keep in mind, it always does get wet and rainier during the La Nina around Australia, Tasmania, and New Zealand. Lower tropospheric temperatures down from the peak. So La Nina is definitely having an effect on global surface temperatures as well. Both of these metrics are down. Over the last thousand years, we have a very clear record of when these grand solar minimums occurred and approximately the length of them is an average of 30 years. It's again and again, you can see where the temperature dips are by so many reconstructions using stalactites, tree rings, cores from the ocean, cores from lakes, cores from the ice. And this is what they came up with on all the continents overlaid on top of each other into the cooling pattern. You see the oval shaped dotted line there so let's go back through time and see if we can line some of these up on the chart there. 79 AD, parallel pattern. 1356, same parallel pattern. 1486, same parallel pattern. 1665, 1855, and here we come again, 2024. Now those are easily discernible. When we get this planetary geometry and line up, definitely going into a solar minimum. And the Antarctic past temperatures match exactly with everything else in those last couple of charts. And moving forward, I've had a lot of people ask me, what will the conditions be like during the grand solar minimum? Well, here you go. These are some areas already marked out on a spot, which I'm going to do a video on. Where you see red, it's gonna get cooler. 
Where it's green, it's going to dry more, and where those two yellow dots are, it's going to actually get wetter in those spots. So take a look at the agricultural production of Australia. If the cooler weather moves more northward, as it will, coming off Antarctica, the chill is going to have an effect in parts of Western Australia, New South Wales, Victoria, and the Mali area. That area is going to go offline for them wheat production-wise. So how is that going to push prices around the rest of the world when China, United States, Russia, Europe also start to go offline in the Northern Hemisphere? We'll have to figure this out with some different food growing techniques. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. Hope this information presented helps you plan for the future. Changes are coming. You can see food production is going to be affected globally, especially in the cereal grains. And please remember to pass this through your social media and jump over on a Patreon. Check out my different channel there. You can support my work.